No, I've already done it. Um, <laughs> Have you done it? You did it beforehand. So nah, that all... No, I said I'm going to record in three, two. No, I've already done it. See, uh, that's what I did. That's yeah, funny. It's mate. official. Thanks for it's making great to be so here much again, effort mate. for yeah. today's show. I've come a long, so I've much come a long way. You to have be here. two flights, yeah. multiple drives. Yeah. It's I drove I had two flights and dedication two car, is car trips. Yeah. It's well, there's a, probably car trips it, to the it, first airport too, wasn't there? So it there's was probably a journey, yeah. three, four three, car trips. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty wild, mate. Yeah. Thanks for your car, dedication. Two flights and Basically, another car. Stephen's been on a junket. <laughs> uh, cruising the Whit Sundays up in Cairns with our good friends Robo Rock. Are they good more, friends? More on uh, Tech Guide next week about that. They have, I've been invited to a couple of their a couple of their soirees. they they little. Nice. They like to have them in. Like there was one I couldn't go to the, at Airs Rock. There was one. Yep. Uh, I've been invited to them all. Yeah, no. And, she, and you, it was mentioned that you always say no to them. But, but who said and, that, Jade? Uh, yeah, Jade said that Trevor always say no. I said that. I'll represent. Well, I'll okay. represent. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I don't need to spend two and a half days yeah. away from my family to see a robot vacuum. Yeah. You with me? So you say that I do need to spend two days? Then? I'm saying yeah. you don't, you I don't, don't have, I don't you have, don't have the constraints. Or I asked the question. I no, said to no, Joe. No, no. Yeah. You don't have the constraints of no. young kids who it's nice for me to be home in the afternoon when they get understand. home. understand. understand That's completely. It. And Mate, I, I even asked in a, Joe. In five years from now, I am junketing <laughs> the hell out of this life if I can keep it up. Because I said to Joe, I said, do, do you mind me going? She goes, why not? Go. Who well, cares? Like, enjoy it. I went, okay. Yeah, she's sick of him. Sign off. Yeah, so she, yeah, she saw the, she saw, got rid of me for a couple of she's days. Like, oh, she's like, She's going away tomorrow. Oh. So we, we're together a day and then she's Ships off. She's in a night. The, she's off with the girlfriends for four days so down oh, in Melbourne really? or something. Going, yeah. No, they're going, no, sorry, they're, going to, they're going to Queensland. Yeah. You don't care where they're going as long as they're going. <laughs> Boom. Anyway, oh, no. so I'll, yeah, I'll miss her dearly. I'll be um, crying myself to sleep every night. And know? also, t- I like Tuesdays are, are out for me. I like they are for you. You didn't yeah. do anything on Tuesday, so what was the point of being on? Tuesday? You know what I mean? No, like, I did actually. I did. I did with them. Yeah, oh, although okay. I was supposed to go to. They went out to the barrier. No, but Reef. you didn't. Yeah, I didn't go. No, that's no. what I'm saying. No, I, I no, I had a lot of radio. I had a lot of commitments. I had to work. I had to write. I said I had I to know. work. That's like, what I said. I said, yeah. listen, I'm working from four a.m. till four p.m. Yeah. on a Tuesday, yeah. nonstop. So I can't. And and I, I had to I had to really uh, rethink the workflow for the movie podcast because mm. Tuesday is the big day for preparing the show for our right. recording day. Yeah. So I had to sort of really sort of nail down times on the weekend to do even I even did because I left on a Monday to go to Cairns. I, I even did the Tech Guide podcast a day early to make sure that was then scheduled. So all the loyal listeners still had a podcast. There it is. Um, and I did all the audio for the movie podcast on the weekend. So I worked basically on the weekend. So Sunday was my Monday. I'm still hearing junk it. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice, though. With was, Sundays. Cairns, like, Cairns yeah, is great. It's is really it? nice. Yeah, it's um, Cairns. I've it was been Cairns. once, I think. Yeah. Right on the right near the Barrier Reef. It's, it was nice. It ra- rained a bit, uh, but you know what it's like up. Yeah, it rains for an hour and a half. Is and then Port it's... Douglas just north of Cairns? I don't. Or know. much further? I don't know. I feel like I flew into Cairns and went yeah. to Port Douglas with like Jaguar. Yeah, it's, it's, one it's up there. Near, it's up there near mm. Innisfail and all around there. It's really You're just nice. naming places now. Oh, that's that's where. Just they are. north of Rocky and Townsville. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Beautiful place. Beautiful just name part of the places. World. Very humid. Oh yeah. If you like humidity. I don't and like And somewhere to go uh, in winter where temperature's oh, not yeah. bad is there. Oh, yeah. get a holiday home. It's like 26 You're degrees You're looking for investment properties. A little holiday <laughs> home. Oh, look <laughs> out. That was nice. And you know what I noticed? So many uh, American tourists. Oh, really? Way more than Aus- Australian tourists. Like there were so many in our hotel. We were staying at the Crystal Brook, I think the Riley Hotel. Mm. And it was just full of uh, all the tour groups. You can hear all the American accents going out on tours and even in the in the restaurants. Oh and my God! The, yeah, let's get dinner. Yeah, they're, they're they're all there. It's it's uh, it's mate, it's great. They're, they're there to obviously see the Barrier Reef and to see some of the most beautiful parts of Australia. Yeah, and Stephen Finney. and see me. Yeah, from Tech Guide as well. Do you get any yeah. fan fan girls, fan no. boys? No. Yeah. Okay. No it's two not... blokes recognition. Nothing. No Tech Guide recognition. That'd I be... even had my shirt on. I have this shirt on. That's possibly the... the worst thing that could ever happen. Is <laughs> oh my god, you're the bloke with the podcast with Stephen Finney. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine yeah. if someone came up and you said, Oh, you do that podcast with Trevor Long? Yeah. You'd be like, Listen, they go, How's Trevor? They said, Trevor's good. I'm not bad either. <laughs> you get, would you get that or what? I said, I'm good. You don't want to hear about me? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we are. I'm used to that. We have talked about it a lot. We are intertwined like that. We do get joint yeah, emails and stuff. Do, and I'm yeah, like, You know, you, you could send me we're this separately. Yeah. yeah, we're not married to each other. Yeah. We do spend a lot we're of time on a Wednesday. We're fierce competitors. Yeah. 
Not really right? fierce. Really? No. I competitors. mean, you know, yeah. they're competitors. Well, exactly, yeah. Tech Guide and EFTM are competitive yeah, that's uh, websites. Right. That's it. You that's don't it. see it that way? Mate, I exist in my own little world there. We produce content for people to enjoy just like you do. I had this conversation with uh, uh, Josh Dowling, who's writing some car stuff for me, and he's yep. like, oh, do you mind if I – And we talk, he's like talking from a world of the corporate yep. website people. And I went, mate, I don't care if you reference, link to, and mention every other website. I don't care because yeah. we all exist. Good backlinks. Like, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't right. matter. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. what, we're not pretending that everyone else doesn't exist. No, of course. Why? Yeah, of course. Just do the best you can is all we can do. Yeah. Georgie Best. That's all we're doing. All that's right. It. Speaking of Georgie Best, we've got a problem and we'll be on with the show straight after this. <laughs> you haven't put this. Jeez, you got to either be, what is it? What's the saying? If you don't, pre- Pre- if you're preparing pre- to fail, 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 fail to prepare. prepare yeah. well, I fail to prepare. Welcome to Two Blokes Talking Tech. Not a bad price. With Trevor Long from EFTM.com. Really handy device. And Stephen Fennec from techguide.com.au. I was thinking, what are you doing? And then I realised <laughs> I realized that the intro plays and you don't, so don't see I us. gesticulated to the camera. Oh, wow. And Stephen didn't flinch as much as I thought he no. would. No. I'm thinking, what are you doing? What are you yeah. doing? I waved. What are you talking about? It's just waving. Wave with your middle fingers. Is that how you wave to people? <laughs> what are you doing, mate? Two Blokes Talking Tech proudly brought to you by Sunkist and Diet Coke <laughs> still. And not a, not a single representative from uh, well, yeah. Asahi, as we were told in, in the comments. Are they the same company? And, uh, no. Uh, well, that's Coca-Cola Amateur, and this is Asahi. Remember we, <laughs> yeah. we tried to read it? That's and right, yeah. Come on. I made an ass of myself. Come an on. An Asahi of myself. Free ads. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, episode... <laughs> This is unbelievable. Episode 631 of Two Blokes Talking Tech. Thanks to Netgear. Thanks to Arlo. Lots to talk about with them this week. Some great deals, some great new products. Yep. Some big news. Uh, and we'll talk about that shortly. But um, on with the show. Um, two years ago, maybe longer, it was announced that uh, Telstra and TPG were teaming up for regional coverage in Australia. Isn't regional that mobile funny? coverage. It was and who was the first company to complain about that? Optus. And so they went to the ACCC. And the ACCC said, we don't think it's right. Then they went to you know arbitration and they checked again. In the end, the ACCC said, we don't think it's right. Now, <clears throat> I declare an interest here. I submitted to the ACCC investigation on this saying, I think it's outrageous that you would knock it back. Yeah, This is the best thing that could happen for regional Australians. If you live, my example is if you live in Young yeah. and you don't get great Vodafone coverage right now, you're never going to give them a go. So you are not able to get Kogan Mobile deals, Ionet yeah, deals, TPG right. deals. You're not getting competition. Yep. And so for Telstra to make a large part, if not all, of their network available to a competitor to on sell is yeah. awesome competition. Yeah. Now they the ACCC broadly said, well, yeah, but what about Optus? So that's there. That's absolutely the uh, <laughs> official rule. Like that as well. Yep. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So this week we get an email, yeah. Optus, and, <laughs> Optus and TPG joint press release. We're announcing a partnership. Yeah. And, and is is uh, and has Telstra had any rumble here? Are they gonna? The first thing I did was ring ring Telstra and say, yeah. "Are you going to object to this?" Yeah. And they broadly said, "No." Right. Look, in the end, they can have the second bride choice. You know. Yeah. You Bridesmaids know. choice. So Bride, yeah. They can they can take the bridesmaid right. broadly. So. Um, yeah, and right. look, bottom line, it look it's not great for Telstra, but it's it's not the end of the world for them. They'll still push yeah. their competitive their, so uh, bro- nature. Broadly explaining this is that uh, Telstra, uh, sorry, Optus and Vo and TPG, which is Vodafone, mm. they will share their infrastructure to allow greater coverage for each other. In Correct. The country. Is that Broadly. explained? It? Now, to, to be clear, they currently do that with 3G. Yeah. Okay. So if you're a Vodafone customer right now and you're in the bush, you might see 3G on your phone, even though TPG shut down their 3G yeah, network December. last year yeah, yeah. because they have a roaming agreement with Optus on 3G. So yeah. Harry, when we're in Young, goes, oh, I'm roaming. I'll turn off data. Man, it's not overseas. You're okay. <laughs> but it shows up as being roaming. Oh, cute, he said that. Right? Yeah. It was. I was very. I was, yeah. I was actually chuffed that, yeah. he, that he thought He's that way. roaming, yeah. This is actually a far different agreement. This is yeah. a multi-operator core network agreement, which means that the towers are, are there's two and a half thousand towers in there regional are Australia. Exactly two thousand four hundred and forty-four Optus mobile operator sites in regional Australia. They will operate as both TPG Vodafone towers yep. and Optus towers, yep. and your connection to the networks goes back to those companies. So you are not roaming on Optus. Yeah, you are simply using so you, a piece of infrastructure that's that Optus installed. They've got access to. 
And so it's actually a far better deal for TPG Vodafone. So I've got some numbers. Let me read some numbers here. Yeah, it's increasing its current national 4G coverage with this deal from around 4,000 yep. square kilometres to around 1 million square kilometres. 400,000 to a million. Four, what did I say? You said 4,000. 400,000, sorry. Square kilometres to a million square kilometres and 98.4, that's reaching 98.4% of the population. Yep. Now, they're basically, I. And I'm not reading from data here. I'm hearing anecdotally, but yep. I understand that this is going to allow TBG, TBG to essentially shut down towers, and for Optus to then, you know, yeah. share share with them. So there's actually a reduction in TBG owned towers. So I actually think this deal is unbelievable for TBG. Yeah. Like they're getting, so they're they're going to utilize Optus is going to utilize some of TBG's spectrum to make yeah. their coverage to better make in the five G better. Their five G right. rollout, yeah. They, and this is fast a track it. decade long four G and five G deal. Yeah. So it's not going to disappear anytime soon. There you go. Yeah. Mate, this is exciting because Optus is already think about it this way. From a competition perspective, Optus is already there in these places. Yep. Telstra is already there. So it's only TBG Vodafone coming into the market. So they're the ones that are going to be aggressively going, hey, look, look at, at these us. deals. Yeah, right? They're going to get the best out of it, aren't they? So it's unbelievable deal for yeah. regional Australian customers. But then I, I have this message for the ACCC. If <laughs> this is okay, why was the Telstra deal not okay? Yeah, Is it because Telstra's too big? Is it because they've already got just a massive advantage out there anyway? Yes, but this was going to give TPG the ability to sell that same network. Yeah. A bigger network. I think the Telstra deal made it even more competitive. Right. Because a Vodafone could have sold so hang on, so Optus, the Telstra but, scale network. So Optus protested because it's going to make Vodafone bigger or Telstra bigger or both? They protested, protested because it was unfair it was and it was anti-competitive. It was anti-competitive. Yes, yeah. because it was Telstra. Yeah. It's like it. a knee-jerk reaction. Right. And, th- and they won that. They won that. And then now they're in it. Yes. So they've just wide entered Telstra yes. to get to their own themselves. It's like in saying, there. you know what? Oh, that bloke over there's got a beautiful girlfriend. I'm going to complain to the management that they shouldn't be sitting on that seat. They stop <laughs> sitting on that seat. So the bloke goes, oh, we'll go somewhere else. She goes, no, I want to stay with my friends. They're over there. He leaves. You go sit on the seat, yeah. same seat, yeah. <laughs> and you start making out with her. <laughs> What's going so what's your, on? Who's who? Is my Optus, analogy. Is Optus there? Yeah, who's Optus the, um, the person complaining? And making out the guy complaining yeah. and making out with That's the girl. Right. So yeah. Vodafone's TPG's the girl. TPG's the girl. <laughs> no, TPG's the girl. All right. Look, I'm not sure it's the perfect analogy. Yeah. Well, no, I kind of get it, what you're trying to say there. That, I it, just, yeah. I yeah. struggle. The Australian Competition Consumer Commission, the ACCC, their job is to make things yeah. competitive. Yeah. They said no to TPG being on someone else's towers. The, the, you would think in your head what they want, the ACCC, yeah. is for TPG to go, well, if we want to be big in regional Australia, we've got to invest a billion three dollars into building yep. more towers. They're not doing that. Mm. They're not building any new towers. But they they do say that they're going to fast track the number of five G sites in the re, in regional areas, and that that's going, that's helping Optus. No These doubt. are quotes yeah. Yeah. from a statement. We don't know what that yeah. means. Was it ten years away, and now they brought it forward to six years away? Uh, well, because my understanding yeah. is it doesn't mean it's all going to be amazing next year. Yeah, right? I think this is a long term look at it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, over the next decade. Yeah, but it's uh, interesting union this one TPG, which is Vodafone, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and Optus. And as soon when I, I, I when I read this uh, email, I mm. thought of you thinking, hard. I wonder what you're thinking of this with, especially what happened with Telstra and all that. I yeah. just I I want. And I should make a commitment. I should I should try and talk to the ACCC about it because I just I just don't understand how it's yeah. okay for them to be in bed with Optus but not to be in bed with Telstra. Yeah. When yes, Telstra is bigger in the bush, but this yeah. this deal is going to have as many new towers built by a third network yeah, as the as Telstra, the Telstra Vodafone deal. The, that, that's I'm, my point. I'm reading here the agreement has an initial term of 11 years. Plus options. And includes an option for TPG to extend the agreement for a further five years. Mm. Yeah. Which you would argue is probably within the 4G switch off. Like 4G right. is so going to switch in, off in, in 16 years. 10 years, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. 3G, you know, 10 years after five. Like, yep. I just feel like 4G has got another 10 to 15 years in it. It feels like this deal yeah, covers. Right. Them into the next generation the next phase, of mobile. Six G. Mm. Interesting. I don't know. Look, I think. No, but I, I think, was. But I think at its heart, though, the, the customers in the regional areas are the winners here. 
hundred percent. They're going to get the benefit. Let me they be would, very and they, clear. And they would have got it that under the Telstra TPG exactly. partnership as well. I yeah. am absolutely pumped yeah. that regional Australians. Yeah. And I have a great relationship with Vodafone in Yaki's. Their CEO is a top bloke. They've got a great people there. But and I'm a Vodafone paying customer because when I travel, I use Vodafone roaming. Yep. But my wife too. is also on the Vodafone network as a Kogan customer because it's yeah. cheaper. Yeah, my, it's a cheaper mom, way to access the network. Mobile, yeah, yeah. My wife's on Vodafone direct, but yeah, my mum's on Kogan mobile. Well, you waste your money then. What are you doing? Yeah. Switch it to Kogan. Oh, I don't tell her what to do, mate. Wow. <laughs> she makes her own decisions. I just advise her uh, strongly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Look, so my I'm when this when this is when we and this is interesting. I'd be interested to see when physically that million square kilometres is available to people. Yeah. Like when is coverage going to look better for a Vodafone yeah. customer? It won't be tomorrow. It'll no, be a while. and they say yeah. it's the next year that it starts. Yeah. But uh, but you know, for in reality, mm. when do we think that a customer in a regional area can finally? You know, choose Kogan Mobile or Ionet yeah. or TPG where there's good well, deals. it's in TPG's best interest to get that smartly happening smartly. You don't want to be yeah. waiting around for years. And look, Spectrum the, is, you know, yeah. in the airwaves and they yeah. own it. They could probably hand that over to Optus as quick as they need it. Yeah. And again, my understanding broadly is that this deal is financially better for TPG than the Telstra deal yeah. was. Yeah, but right. I think in terms of the, uh, the terms of the deal, but I think that the longer term play for the Telstra deal would have been better for them. I think uh -huh. the our custom acquisition and all that stuff would have been better Maybe. under the other deal. Interesting how it all turns around, doesn't it? Yeah, well, isn't I mean, it interesting. It's kind of like yeah. I I think in the end, Optus was sad that their three G partner, their three G roaming partner, yeah. went and had relations with someone else, <laughs> and now they've forgiven and they them. They went to they went to they went to court and said, okay, that's that's what you think is going to happen. You come back to me, baby. Yeah, and they're back. Well, Optus is also in the news for uh, the the Open Signal released their quarterly report on the quality of the five G networks, mm -hmm. and Optus has actually topped the class here. They've yeah. topped the charts. They've done this a few times in a row. Haven't in they? Open Signal's latest mobile network experience report, they have been uh, awarded the fastest five G download speeds on nice. average, and um, which is ahead of everyone else. They've won. They've won this for the sixth time in a row. Yeah. And they're at their speed, 208.7 megabits per second mm. on 5G. Pretty good. On average. That's pretty Pretty solid. good. And that's ahead of Telstra and Vodafone, respectively. Telstra was second, Vodafone third. Optus also won the Consistent Network Quality Award as well, outright. They won it. They, they did. They were tied uh, statistically with Vodafone the last quarter, but they pulled ahead to be on their own. Vodafone took out the 5G upload speed. So yes. uploads, they won that one. Uh, they overtook Telstra in the top spot there. Mm -hmm. And you're probably wondering, well, what, what did Telstra do? Well, uh, Telstra retained the Coverage Experience Award and they easily, uh, easily over Optus and Vodafone. Uh, Optus also won the Best 5G Gaming Experience Award. So lower latency, faster yeah, connections. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Probably all the, based around ping and latency times, yeah. Exactly. So they had the best multiplayer experience on the Optus network with a score of 82.1 on a 100-point scale. So despite all their dramas, they're still ranking here. So they, they had well, what, data I mean, breach in September 22. November last year was the what the worst outage in Australian history. Yeah, but none of those, Still no CEO, by the way. Think too. about those things. Yeah. None of those things actually affect the their network because they've yeah. just got a strong network. They build a strong network. But not having a CEO is becoming yeah. a strange What's going thing on there? for the company, don't you think? Mm, it's been, what, six months now? Are they just sitting there going, well, things are rolling. It's yeah. still working. We've won, a, we've won Open Signals Award. We're good. <laughs> like, what, what does it matter? What do yeah. we need someone for? Well... Is Michael Venter still the uh, acting CEO? Yeah. I'm going to take it. So, yeah. he's, um, are, are there still some candidates out there? Maybe that they're talking to. Is it still? Are the, is it the usual suspects that we suspected it was going to be, or are they going to pull someone out internally? Maybe someone bring in. A... I feel like it's going to going to be a Singtel drop in. You reckon? They're going to drop someone in yeah. and go right. You're in charge now. It's Just been keep a while, don't you reckon? To, is, is it? Makes what does that wild. say? That they haven't made a decision. Does that mean that they have? They don't know. Does that, does that make them look weak? Or what? What, what do you think? Is it, is it the, the indecisive of them, or should I, they have someone? I already? think it indicates that Singtel doesn't care. Well, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't you think? Why mm. would you leave a company that's had so much turmoil? Yeah. Why would you leave it with rudderless? Well, Michael Venter must be doing a good job as the interim I understand CEO. Understand that, but if that's is he a chance of, is he a chance of becoming? Everyone I talk to says no. Right. Okay. 
but all, if, all your but contacts with Optus. If he's that good, yeah. <laughs> they love you at Optus, <laughs> mate. Uh, why yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. If he's that good, you'd yeah. appoint him. I agree, mate. I agree. Pull so the trigger. Some, and if they're waiting for Gladys, like when's that appeal going to run? Well, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like what? Oh, you watch. Oh, by the time this goes there, they're going to announce the CEO. <laughs> you watch. The they're going to say, them. stuff them. Let's announce it tomorrow. We'll do an emergency yeah. ad- addendum. We'll show those idiots. And we'll do a pre-show <laughs> pre-show. Just well, you're, The show you're about to listen to contains information that preceded the, in, the announcement today. Episodes, you know, have you seen yeah. episodes of, um, crap, what was I watching? Definitely Millionaire used to do it. And there was another mm. one the other day that goes... Um, you know, this episode was recorded before the Queen's death in September. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, so they're going to mention the frigging yeah, royals, the Queen, you know? Yeah, it's like, okay. no, who's writing into a TV so, station I, I about have, that? I have seen little uh, disclaimers to say uh, this this program reflects attitudes and uh, and things that, that were well before modern standards or something like that. To say, in really? other words, to say we're woke today, so this this shit was this is <laughs> yeah, how this it is, is in yeah, this yeah, one. You know, we've right really moved yeah, on. we've really we moved on. We yeah. wouldn't normally air this, but we know you want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. But it, they just give that little disclaimer to say, yeah, yeah, this yeah, reflects yeah. attitudes uh, that are, have anyway, been so uh, no longer. If there's no uh, precursor to this show, then the CEO <laughs> is still acting Mr. Yep. Bender. Yep. Good That's luck right. to it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm, sure they'll, I'm sure they'll tell you first, mate, who their CEO is. I don't think so. No. no I'm pretty confident I won't be there. Well, mate, <laughs> imagine they said, listen, we want you to break it. We want you to interview them. I'll be like, yeah. Where's the hidden cameras? What's going yeah. on? What's happening in here? <laughs> I was like, we need to have this. Is, com- it, is it that big a story that when they announce a CEO, it's yeah, depending on who huge. it is, depending on who it is, I suppose, it'll be so. huge. What about if it's some person we've never heard of from Singtel? It's still, huge. is that still a big story? They finally appointed him. Yeah, right. that's the story. It's taken a while, eh? Yeah. Or is, is it because gla- like is it so because they've taken the search? overlooked and you know this, yeah, that, right. and the other? Yeah. Is it is it because they want to be to be seen to be t- making a worldwide search and a really strong campaign maybe. to find maybe the right the right candidate? Maybe that's right. Yeah. Maybe what they're doing. Because I think it was announced. When did she resign? In November, December. So it was Christmas. Mm. So there was that period where you don't really appoint a CEO then. Yes, but so you don't appoint them, but you definitely know who May. they are, and it's you now find May. them. I yeah. think they would have found someone. Yeah, right. Maybe the list is that poor. Maybe no one wants to do it. Maybe as we to think, maybe they some person said they turned them down. Would you turn down? <laughs> what do you want to run? Do you want the job? Do you? Would you want the job? <laughs> Imagine you. I'd, I'd ask for a, an upgrade of my plan. Give me a good plan. Okay? Give me a good sim. Give me one on the house. No, I'd cut back. First thing I'd do, I'd get rid of all the free sims. I'd disable <laughs> them all. How many are there? It wouldn't be that many. I bet you there's a lot. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. You probably, some executives are be thinking, how come I have this phone doesn't work? I want to know <laughs> everyone who's not paying. Oh. <clears> and then some of them will get them back. Would you do what I yeah. remember when I suggested? Remember when we had this conversation mm. late last year, whenever it was. I don't when, remember it, but yeah. When go um, you said what? What would you? When you asked me what would I do yeah. if I was CEO, and I said I'd buy ten minutes on the six o'clock news across all stations, yeah. like an address to the nation, <clears throat> yeah, make it look like this is such a big, big yeah. change. Was that? Is that? I is wouldn't that do still? that, no. <clears throat> but you know what I'd do? I'd say to the marketing person, how much do we spend on marketing every year, yeah. and they'd say twenty million dollars or whatever yeah. it is, and I'd say stop. Stop spending anything. Yeah. Sack everyone in marketing, <laughs> really? like the agencies and all that. And I'd say, come back to me with just ads about plans. I don't need fluff. Yeah. I just want, we just need to sell our best plans. That's what, that, none of so these none telcos of the are doing. Yes and all those none of the telcos are actually selling their plans. You know when you're in America and all you see is ads that are this many minutes, that many plans, yeah, yeah, this many lines. Yeah. They sell plans. Yeah. Sell me a plan. It's become, I think I've plan- never seen an Optus ad that says, you know what, for $35 a month, you can get 10 gigabytes of data and unlimited calls and text. Did you know the average user only uses 5 gigabytes of data? Sign up now. Yeah. Like, just sell me the plan. Do you reckon that's gone beyond the sort of that, – that's pretty still basic, that information. But customers know that. Uh, that's, customers know that. Now, the reason no, why – No, they don't. You talk to them every no, week. No, well, I do. But <clears> I think <throat> the reason that the telcos have taken that marketing to that other level – Sort of a bit more esoteric and you know appealing, Wanky. appealing right? <laughs> well, you call that's what you call it. That's what I'm trying to put it in a nice way. Yeah. Um, is because it's so that knowledge is there already out there. Yeah, well, that's a shame. They want it. They want people to attach yeah, themselves living in the to a brand. No that, one gives you know, a rat. Well, but but the strength of a brand is is even in a telco. You got to think. It's, no it, one it, gives a your rat. relationship with your telco is pretty solid. I think. No, it's not. Yeah. No one you gives a crap. Well, We're lazy. We've proven that year over year.
The it's, fact that they still yeah. have that many customers shows that we're lazy. Yeah. Okay. Because your um, job as yeah. the CEO of, of Optus, aside from the Make business, sure the network's the working. business side of it, because that's a whole yeah. other enterprise yeah. business. Yeah. But for a consumer business, you want to grow customers. So you yeah. need you need to urgently cannibalize Telstra's but base. It's, but it's not like yeah, but it's not like they're losing customers. You like you no, said, no, but you need to grow. Them. Kept customers. The whole objective yeah. is to grow. Yeah. So I'm getting yeah. like families. I'm saying the best, like there's still no great family plan in the big three telcos. Right. Yes, Vodafone has a good one where you, the more you add, the more you save. That's pretty good. Yeah. But Aldi's the most renowned family plan. I would say to the engineers, build me uh, the best family plan that is, you know, you can have four or five lines together. I'll call them lines because what Americans do. Four or five yeah. phone, phone numbers together, pooled data, and yeah. mum and dad can switch it on and off So none of the majors have that. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you got to remember, I reckon that, there's a, there's a number of users in Australia, right? That's going to basically stay the same. Yes, they it's need where, to it's, cannibalize Telstra. It's where Telstra. they're going to be that's changing. That's right. So there's say that let's say there's 26 million customers in Australia. Yes. Telstra's got 10. Uh, Optus has got 10. Yeah. Vodafone's got the rest. So it's a matter of just switching for customers to that's think right I'm today. I want to go to Optus. When or was the last time I'm you saw to... an ad that said, yeah. "Hey, Telstra customer, come to yeah. Optus." Yeah. Did you see the, the t- latest Would, Telstra ad? Have you seen the latest Telstra ad? Which one? Well, you go, is this a worthless ad? You know, that one where the guys that goes, well, if, if you're not a Telstra customer, it is. Have you seen that one? No. Where they're on the side of a hill or something, they're farmers or something. No, you I haven't seen that? that? No. And the kid goes, oh, I hate this. Hate. He goes, am I going to get paid for this still? Really out there. And you, and you think, well, the, the message of the ad is that the, you, you don't get any good deals or good value unless you're a Telstra customer. Well, Which is sort of a. You know what I'd. The yeah. other thing I'd do, I'd say, I'd come up with a map and I'd go, no, I'd put a table up and says, Telstra, 99.2% coverage. Optus, 98.3. TPG, 98.2. And here's a map of Australia. And you'd show that only 25% of Australia has mobile coverage. So yeah. why are we talking about 98%? Yeah, of the population. Yes, yeah. because it doesn't mean yeah. anything when you're on the highways. But I Telstra's think, just as bad as Optus I most think days. Optus has got a few things up their sleeve. Well, including and yeah, Telstra too, too. I think Optus have got the big satellite. Well, the satellite play. thing, Matt. That's yeah. the num- they got to launch yeah. that quickly and urgently because yeah. Telstra doing the, the same. Yeah, we have one hundred percent coverage of Australia. Yeah, because what you were talking about. So the land mass, I think it's thirty percent of the country at best. Yeah. So sixty-five percent of the land mass of Australia has zero mobile coverage. Seventy. There's a lot of yeah. desert and yes. empty spaces. So. That's a big. It's a big country. That's what. That's but your ad. That's why you you got those emergency SOS features. Yeah. Remember Apple and stuff. And so if you have these satellites deployed where you've got the hundred percent coverage that they're promising, they sort of alluded to it last year. Mm. Uh, then that's a that's a that's, game changer. By the way, meant to be this year. That's a game changer. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Have they got that up their sleeve? And because I'll tell you, yeah. Telstra's behind on that. I don't think Telstra's anywhere near ready for yeah, that. Yeah. Right. Wow. Not at all, excuse me. Okay. Uh, I think Optus is ready, is going to be first. What's, and that's what are, huge. What are they waiting for? Well, the they've got, they got, they got, they got to launch the thing. Someone's got to put the satellites in the air. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, we're available. Just We've said this before. <laughs> Would you go up Just in space, cons- is what you're saying? Or? No, consultancy, mate. <laughs> Bring me into the boardroom. Consult. The two blokes. My daily rate, <laughs> mate. Yeah, it would make your eyes water. Me too. Yeah. If you yeah. want this kind of knowledge, folks. You want to make it worth your while. That's right. I'm not here to yeah. hand we out do free talk advice. To a, we do talk to a lot of people on the radio. We talk to people. We talk to the punters. Yeah. We know what they want. Yeah. We know what they need. But you, know, you don't bring in the marketing people into the room because they'll get really irritable yeah. about what, what did, I have to say. What, what did uh, Chippy used to say? Yeah, some some genius with a ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> the marketing ponytail guy. Ponytail horse driver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some bloke with a ponytail. Anyway, yes. um, we got. I don't know how we got talking about that, but anyway, Optus and TPG in bed together, and Optus doing yeah. very well on speed. Back to you. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. And we do it all thanks to the great people at Netgear, netgear.com.au. And one of the things that they have is a product uh, called the Netgear Nighthawk Mobile Hotspots. Now, the M6 Pro is the latest one of those, and their headline for this is Take Flawless 5G Wi-Fi Everywhere. Now, I'll give you an example. I'm going to take this with us when we go to, like, the U.S., we can put a US SIM card in it because it works in 125 countries and we can have Wi-Fi for the whole team in the car when we're driving. Uh, I can take this to another country and use it as a backup for my connectivity if I'm not using a local SIM but I just want my laptop and my phone so I can just buy one SIM and get everything connected. It's an unbelievable device with high speeds, Wi-Fi 6E, everything you need both here and abroad. If you've got a team around you and you travel or you're out on the road or you work remote, 
Netgear Nighthawk M6 Pro. Check it out. And there are a range of new products coming from Netgear, which we'll tell you about even more shortly. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech with Trevor Long and Stephen Fennec. Bit of drama um, yesterday morning, Stephen. And look, yeah. the, the dust has settled on this, but we, we should say we're recording this on Wednesday. So if anything evolves on Thursday, obviously we, we can't include that here. Yeah. But on, on uh, Wednesday morning, a bunch of people started texting me and posting that they were getting other people's profiles in the Qantas app. And yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? And so someone sent me a screenshot and they go, well, this is what I'm seeing. I'm like, you're, well, you're not Bob. What are you seeing Bob for? And so I looked on my phone. I'm using a Motorola at the moment and nothing was a problem. And then I thought, hang on a minute. So I opened up the iPhone, logged into the Qantas app and I saw yeah. Darren. Then I closed the app, opened it again, saw Natalia. Closed the app, opened again, Simon. I, wow. I saw eight to ten different profiles in 15 minutes and it's wild because... Wow. You know, see their name and then their points balance. Some of them doing very well. <laughs> but then some, you would see future bookings. Here's a trip to Auckland that Natalia is really? taking. Really? And wow. Natalia's booking reference number. Wow. The booking reference number. So you could have gone in and altered a seat, seat, altered chose a seat, seat and yeah? changed the flight. For other people, and... flying that day, boarding pass. Click on it. There's the boarding yeah. pass. And I'm like, this is wild. So obviously it went pretty wild as a story during the day, covered everywhere. <clears throat> my biggest thing during the day was I was banging on about how I don't like the idea that I've got someone's boarding pass and I could scan and get on the plane. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the idea that I've got someone's booking reference number and what do we do about that? It was much later in the day that Qantas said to me, look, re the boarding pass thing. We've had no incidences of that happening. Everything's yeah. calm at the airports. Just want to say that and I acknowledge that. <clears throat> but they said if two people try and board a plane with the yeah, same boarding right, pass, right, the right. second yeah. person will beep. And then they'll go onto the plane and get the person and say, have you got your ID? And if they don't have ID, yeah, then off. the one with the ID works and gets well, on the seat. I get that. But so this was happening it shouldn't come to that. Where, this <clears throat> Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning, 8.15, the, the app went kaput, yeah. basically. Because I was travelling with Qantas from Cairns this morning. Hmm. Right, We were recording this on a Wednesday, so Wednesday morning. Uh, I had a 6 a.m. flight from Cairns to Brisbane that had an hour and a half layover, then hmm. Brisbane to Sydney. I had my, on Android, I'm using an Android phone, had my boarding pass and it said 6A and I sat in 6A and then another guy got on the plane and he had a printed boarding pass that said 6A mm. and he sort of pointed and he says, you're in my seat. I said, no, I'm not. I'm in my seat. Yeah. And the the guy came on with his little printout. He goes, I oh, know. He goes, you, you've been changed to 7A. Refresh your app. And I refresh it, and it went to 7A. I said, mm. well, and the guy ended up just sitting in 7A, my other seat, right? Yeah. And this was, uh, that was at six, Steven, so quarter, quarter, quarter to so six I'm in the say, morning. that's unrelated. Nothing to do with that? You're no, okay? that happens. No, but but then I got to um, Brisbane, and it had happened. While I was in the air, it mm. happened, right? Yep. So I, my flight was from eight from 6 till 8.15 or whatever. Mm. And so I landed in Brisbane. And I got to the gate. I remember I was texting you saying, oh, look, mm. I'm here. And, and, you, and you were telling me about the glitch. Yeah. And I went, okay. And you were saying, oh, you better show ID and everything. So I've gone up to the counter and said, look, here's my, here's my boarding. Is it right? And they said, oh, look, we're just telling people to refresh their boarding passes because there's been a glitch in the system. Mm. And I thought, okay. And that, that was what they were saying, that the the glitch, which is more what you – about you seeing other people's boarding yeah, passes – Make sure that – because they were saying, that's what she said, make sure it's your name on the boarding pass. Yeah, right. Because the, I think they're referring to the fact that you could have thought, okay, add, add to Apple Wallet, yeah. you got someone else's boarding pass. You could have done pass. that. That yeah. was what you were able to do. Yeah. You were able to click add to Apple Wallet. Yeah. I was able to – and so, the, look, I get it. No drama happened. But it's more about the first breach of privacy – so yeah. I saw other people's details. No, I can't call but, them. But you never saw, <clears throat> to be clear, you saw their frequent flyer number, their points, where they're going, but you never saw their address or phone number. No, and stuff no. Like. But that's not to say that so that's the privacy exposure is pretty decent. Yeah. And yes, it's a small, narrow window of time and how many people were in the app, how many people noticed. I get that. But yeah. then there's the security breach, which is, look, I know it's crazy out of this world, but on a domestic flight, Someone wanting to, with willingness, could have opened the app, gone to a check-in counter, put in a, put in a name, put in a, a flight time because they know it, and yeah. got a boarding pass printed and got on a plane and not be on that plane. Now, 
the chances of the other person not turning up to be on the flight, very, very low. But it might yeah. also, because you online check in for someone, it might stop them checking in. Not They might not come to the airport. I'm just saying, I think Qantas yeah. played it down big time. And so how long day. How long between 8.15 and resolution? I think it was back by 9. I think it was oh, working fast, real quick. Right. Real quick. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And you were saying it's iOS app, not Android I didn't app. notice in the Android app. I only yeah. noticed it in I iOS. Because I was using Android <coughs> for my boarding pass. My, mine could have been unrelated, but... I was told. I think it yeah. was. I think it was only Apple. I noticed that during the when I first opened the app, it said there was an app update and it's all new. So I think it was. I think it was related to an app update. Uh, it was an IT system. The old updates failure. get them, eh? The yeah. updates. Wow. Oh, Qantas said to me it was a it was a systems upgrade, uh, and so basically a systems upgrade. All's good. Don't stress. Everything's yeah, okay. Right. But the problem is, I think that, and they handled it well in their defence. They yep. put out regular updates. Update one, update two, update three. It was very. Uh, from the not Optus disaster playbook, they handle it pretty well. Yeah. I got a phone call pretty early on from someone wanting to make sure they had my number. It was good. Yep. It was from the playbook, the new playbook, yeah. handled well. But my feedback to them was constantly about this whole, but I now know Natalia's booking reference number. What are we doing about that? And they're like, oh, we don't see that as being an issue. It was very, like, I just think they're playing they that a little bit. bit down a little bit. And I think, yeah. Well, look, this will pass look, over for them very quickly. It's not, a, be real. it's not a good look, but no. yeah, I don't think it's gonna. It's the massive privacy issue if you know someone's booking reference number, unless you want to had yeah nefarious goals here to do something bad. But the bigger if issue, someone, actually, please, so if someone knew your booking reference number, would that probably would that trouble you? Or well, if they change the booking, you'd want to change. You'd want to check it then after that. That's yeah, why I just want a new yeah, booking reference course. number. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Can you issue a new booking reference number so that no one can change my flight? That's all yeah. I want. The other thing that happened, mate, and this happened within, well, 20 minutes of me knowing about it, so I don't know how long it had actually been going on, but on Twitter, if someone, one of the news guys at the Today Show, you know, tweeted that it was happening, he got replies from two accounts. One was, you know, Daryl, Qantas Service, and the other one was a Qantas logo, Qantas Customer Care, yeah. saying, oh, if, you, if you've had issues, get in touch with this DMS here. There were scammers. Already jumping Already, in, geez. trying really? to scam people. Unreal. Can you believe how quickly Unreal. that happened? Yeah, I know. Mate, like minutes. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to be alert. So to that's, stuff. that's the issue. Like if someone had a, in the wrong hands, someone <coughs> could really think of a scam with, with you know, you know, your flight's been changed, text yeah. here or something. And know, also, like, like, again, it was it was good, it was fixed quickly, and there was no issues broadly. But it's not a great reflection on a company when they can roll something out that has that negative effect. Mm. It's pretty bad. It's a bad yeah. look, technically. But, but, they, but in your mind, they, they got on top of it pretty quick, though. I or assume not. they someone physically didn't, didn't just stop happening, that's for sure. Yeah, right. Um, but I just think in terms of, like, what, like if I made them, if we rolled out a new EFTM app and it had a bug in it, I'd be like, dude, it's me and one guy. Like, give me a break. But this is Qantas. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like how much testing do they do? And, and I how does say, this happen? A lot of the like I travelled on flights today that were pretty much like or like commuter flights. So people yeah. regularly go on the same, and I reckon ninety five percent of people had the app yeah. or the bought their their digital yeah, yeah. boarding passes. Yeah. I hardly saw a physical Piece of paper. A, a printed boarding pass. Yeah, yeah. So would this would have potentially affected a lot of people uh, at the right time? And the, and the time it happened. Is the, is the kind of the peak hour of exactly. the commuter of commuter those travel. flights yeah, yeah. of Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane. The other, other funny one I saw, and this is completely unrelated to tech, but um, as someone I know tweeted or X, um, no, it was a thread, sorry. Um, isn't it funny that Bonza going bust is the second biggest aviation story today? <laughs> like a whole yesterday, airline, yesterday? The whole Bonza? airline goes bust on Tuesday. Yeah, you know The washout is still happening on yeah, Wednesday, yeah. yet it's not even the number one aviation story in Australia. <laughs> That's how yeah, big a deal it is when Qantas goes down. Yeah. Qantas is a big name, mate. Just like if Telstra or Optus, something happened, yeah. what happened to Optus outage? Imagine if Telstra have an outage. It's massive news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Qantas does something, then it's massive news as well. Oh, so let, just in, in closing, you could authenticate into the app so it knew who you were and then it would show you the wrong details. That's a massive disconnection between systems that says, mm. I've authenticated this person and then it's somehow handing over the wrong information to the other part of the system. It's wild. Wow. And so when you saw it, you were only able to see one other person's details? Or could At a you... time. I just closed the app so open you... and again, and I then, got and you saw another different one. people. Yeah. You're joking. Wow. We... Some with boarding Imagine passes, some without. Imagine you got mine. It would have been hilarious. <laughs> so Cairns to Sydney via Brisbane. I'd be like, oh my God. You're going to go to Perth now, eh? And you <laughs> know I would have changed that flight. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. You wouldn't have had anyone. You'd be sitting by yourself here if you did that today. Some would say. <laughs> Not many, mate. 
Yeah, I would do that. I'd, I'd, I'd be, I'd have you back. With we are them, interviewing mate. candidates for August, so uh, <laughs> we've got lots of lists of questions for candidates. Yeah, um, you going to interview people? Though? Are you going to have interviews, like proper job interviews? No, I'll just no? pick someone. Okay, but there's a big chance no one will want to do it. <laughs> Yeah, right. Big, There's a reason Stephen spends time with fill. me. No one else wants to. Big shoes to fill. Yeah, and plus putting up with him as well. Yeah. Uh, I, so, yeah. so oh, are you going away, hey, Trevor? I'll do it with Stephen? No, it's uh, all the way around. Oh, I can't busy that week. Yeah, I'm, bu- I'm busy that month. <laughs> yeah. Val will be like, oh, it's a long I'm way busy, away. I'm busy. I'm going away that, that those six weeks as well. Yeah. It's great. Don't put yourself down, mate, like that. Imagine I, I just, imagine I just sat here just and go, go on your own. So Stephen would normally tell you about Arlo right now, but <laughs> I'll do it. He's he's on, one, a, he's on a river cruise. One bloke talking. It's not a river cruise. It's a proper cruise. Whatever. It's a one proper one cruise. One bloke. Way to demean no, the I mean, river cruises I mean, like, of the world. It's an ocean cruise, not a river <clears> cruise. Yeah. Um, it is. Uh, yeah. Maybe you do one bloke talking tech. Maybe. One bloke. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, just speak- have a, you know, you do get a cardboard cut out of me, put it here, <laughs> and it'll. It'll probably say about the same amount as, as it does every week because you oh. do talk a lot. Mate. Anyway, speaking of which, <laughs> it's time to do this, Stephen. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Two Blokes Talking Tech, proudly supported by Arlo. And Arlo have been in the news lately because they have released a brand new entry-level full HD camera. The Essential FHD, which stands for Full HD, Full High Definition, is an outdoor security camera that's just $99. Oh. It's available exclusively at Officeworks. And it offers you clear 1080p video, full HD video. It is fully wireless and weather resistant. So you can place it anywhere. So it's a great outdoor camera. You can also have your two-way noise-canceling audio. So you can, if someone's in front of your camera, you can talk to them as clearly as having a phone call on a $99 camera. It can also it also has color night vision. So if there is someone to identify, you will see the color of their shirt, their pants, their hat, whatever they happen to be wearing. Always good information to have. It has a rechargeable battery. It's also compatible with Google Home and Amazon Alexa. And you know what? There's also, would you believe, a built-in spotlight and yep. a siren. It's got it's all in it. The features you need. Yeah. It will it will change your game. If you don't have a security camera right now, this alone, 99 bucks. Gives you the live notifications. You know what's happening. You can have that two-way yep. chat. And then you've got the option of signing up to ILO Secure and add, adding in the idea of cloud storage and all that other yeah. stuff. That, and smart that notifications as well. Yeah. So you get the smart notifications. And uh, you can – look, I, I, I think if you haven't got a, a home security, uh, this could be a great first step into home security, wireless home security. If you already have some ILO cameras, this is a great way to add add to your cameras. Between us, we've got a few at our place, but hmm. you could add one to the front door, the back door, the side door. You know, you want to see the dogs, what they get up to in the backyard. This is 99 bucks, connects directly to your Wi Fi. Well worth a look. 99 bucks, you can buy it exclusively at Officeworks and check it out at arlo.com. Everything about tech you never wanted to know. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Well, Stephen, um, there's a new Netgear product out. Yeah, we talked about the uh, the mobile hotspot earlier, but uh, yeah. this takes it just to a slightly different level. And I'm going to be up front. This is a four thousand three hundred dollar yeah, product. This is not cheap. This and I remember the, talking about yeah. Nikki Nighthawk routers that were yeah. like seven hundred, and I thought that was a lot, like yeah. ten years ago. Yeah. And so this is a expensive product, but I think we need to look at this as like a backbone of the home kind yeah. of thing. And we talk about that a lot, but I don't see people upgrading to this instantly. No. I see people who are investing in a new home, a renovation. Building, or yeah, they're building. They, they yeah. are, they're in a home office. Um, yeah. They've got a lot of connected devices. And also, like, in reality, we always have the newest stuff. Yeah. So we benefit from, like, a Wi-Fi 7, right? So this is a Wi-Fi yeah. 7 quad band yeah. Orbi, Orbi mesh the system. 970 series. Now, that's a three pack, by the way. Yeah. So you get two satellites and yeah. the router and for 4,300. That's more speed, more range as well. You've got a wider network. Five times yeah. speed improvement. Yeah. 100 times decrease in latency. Yeah. 
That's wild. Well, I think they've they've hit the pinnacle here with Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7's got so much more capability over 6E, and, and we're talking back hall, front hall. So there's there's the quad channels. Yeah. They've got the, the, the 6... See, Wi-Fi 6E opened up the 6 gigahertz band. Yep. And now what 7 is doing is taking that band and even maximising it even further. Mm. And I think they're even... What are they using? The 5 gigahertz band in the back hall as well? Yeah. They've so got dedi- four yeah. bands of dedicated back hall, yeah. back hall... Should we explain um, what backhaul is? It's the connection between all the systems. So the yeah, each so satellite from connects the satellite to each other back, back to, to the, the router, router yeah. and through through an, uh, on themselves. Plus, really easy Ethernet backhaul if you've got the ability yeah. to plug that in. Um, Talking like 10 <clears> gigabits 10 per gig second. 10 gig yeah. wired um, uh, LAN. So there's really it, – it would be hard to find a spec yeah. that isn't at the pinnacle, at the premium end of everything. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. This is about being – they talk about being ready for faster internet speeds. You know, in yeah. Australia, we got to gigabit and many yeah. more will get to gigabit. Um, so one, there'll be multi-gig <coughs> s- speeds in the future. One day, yeah. we should sit down and talk about our vision for the like the next version of MBN, the next improvement yeah. to the MBN, because I have, I have views. I have, I have, I have yeah. what I would take as a policy to an election, okay? right. just to be clear. Okay. I should we'll tag that for another day. Yep. But it, we're getting gigabit, right? Overseas, they're obviously getting even faster than that through fibre, and we will get faster than that through fibre as well. Yeah. So it will. I think they don't want to offer too much faster through fibre yet because you don't want to really create a massive. We don't have a ten gig to fifty yeah, meg divide between yeah, the haves the and have nots, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but, but this this product comes along. You remember that the sort of the modern usage now is we mentioned multi gig speeds, we could yeah. say faster. Also, to the number of connected devices is. Is rapidly increasing. Yeah. Right? What do you We've got, got smart devices. I think I'm up to like 70 something. Yeah, 70. we're at 83, and yeah, that's I'm, not I'm with everything. 70. On. I, that's the last time I checked. There's probably mm. more now. Um, and you're also talking 4K streaming and potentially 8K streaming soon as well. And VR. So, so you want to, yeah, VR, AR. So there's all these use cases. And gaming, if you're a gamer, any millisecond improvement is massive, and this looks like it's going to deliver that as well. And look, so, if you're buying this, you're not skimping on the HD plan on Stan and Netflix either. Yeah, You've got the 4K, right? You go everywhere, yeah. So multiple right. streams so, around the home. Like I think yeah. about in five years from now, <clears throat> and we have no desire for Jackson to move out of the home because I want him to live there as long as he can to afford his own place, right? Yep. So five years from now, we got three old teenagers or two old teenagers and a and a mm-hmm. 20-year-old something yep. that – they're not going to be just sitting around. They'll be watching content at yeah. night. They'll, this house will be absolutely oh, totally. yeah. demanding yeah. in terms of its needs. And but this, also, too, the, the working from home aspect, too, I think plays a mm-hmm. part here where a lot of people, they require a high-quality video connection, audio connection. Uh, they're doing a lot of uploading, a lot of big files and yeah. downloading things. So uh, the, I think if you look at, back as short as like five years ago, it's a huge difference to where we are today oh, in yeah. terms of our connectivity and the demands of on that connection. Look, I, I this product is available through netgear.com.au. Um, it's available for pre-order now. Yeah. Um, it will be on shelves in a few weeks. I think this is a very – they know it, it's a very premium product. Yeah. I think this is, for Netgear, a really unique opportunity to get to know their customer even better because, yeah. honestly, if I'm buying this, I'm just going to buy it directly from Netgear, mm. like have that relationship – that means that you're going to probably get great level of kind of back and forth support. Yeah, you're going to customer support. You're going to they they're going to keep you informed on things. Plus, remember, it's got the armor, it's got the parental control. Yeah, that's right. It's got that, all that, the other that's stuff. A, that's complimentary. That so it's yeah. a year, a year. I think you get a year of armor, but yeah. parental controls is like sixty days or thirty yeah, days or something. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's phenomenal. Because you just just consider just how important your wire, your internet connection is now in your home. Mm. It's it's become another utility. It's the it's there with your water, your gas, your electricity, your everything. It's, yeah. it's one of those pillars now. As I said, I don't. If you've got a older Orbi or a TP Link or a D Link or yeah. a Linksys or whatever the heck you've got, I'm not saying four thousand three hundred bucks. Go and get one. Yeah. I'm saying if you're building a home right now, yeah, I would be building in. Uh, Ethernet ports in several places, and I'd be looking yep. at this as my way of distributing Wi-Fi in the home, yep. effectively. Because I'm, I'm if I'm buying, building a home, I'm probably getting new appliances. Every Samsung appliance now yeah, is smart, all connected. Yeah, high center That's appliances right. all connect together. Yep. So there's there's well, benefit you know, to strong networks. There are also some people who just have to have the latest and greatest as well. They're very oh, early mate. adopters that want, you want the me? best. Uh, uh, maybe, but um, yeah, I'm I'm like this myself. I, I've I like to be the first in things too, and, and this mm. this sort of appeal having Wi-Fi seven 
uh, in an Orbi. Like they got the the previous their previous Wi-Fi Seven router, the Nighthawk. The yeah. and it's the same yeah, it's design the wise. There, it's yeah. the same sort of height, isn't yes. it? So the the Orbis change shape. Yeah. They used got to be this kind of thin, uh, yeah. tall thing. Now they're it's this more cylindrical, cylindrical yeah. with sh- with flat edges, S- smaller footprint. Mm. So easier to fit around your it home. It still has a yeah. good look to it. Still got 12 antennas under the hood too, by the way. Well, I think that's why it's so tall, yeah. right? Yeah. So it is like in terms of range, it can reach everywhere from the front yard to the well, backyard. Well, they say yeah. 660 square metres yeah, of coverage. A, if, you live, if you've got a bigger house than that, you're like doing Stephen, very you well. Know, out, of the, out on the estate. <laughs> eh? That's pretty good. In your country home? Yeah. No, I don't have a country home. But um, I have uh, put it this way: in every my corner of my house, my mum will move into her new house when she gets back from Spain. Yeah, and she, I won't be getting this for her. No, because she doesn't need this. Yeah, this is way too much for my mum. Yeah, it's but it's, yeah, for it's like breaking an egg with a sledgehammer. For me, I'm looking at it going. Well, not going to be long before I've got multiple Wi-Fi seven devices in my yeah. place. Hello. Yeah, for like sure. it adds up. And it's, by the way, backwards compatible. Like Wi-Fi 7 is if you've got the latest devices, yeah. but it's it's compatible. Wi-Fi 6, 6E, if you've got an older phone, it'll still yeah. connect. It's yeah, all, all your smart home stuff is still it's still got a 2.4 gigahertz network. Yeah, it does. And, and, the, and you, can single, Orbit, you can single well. that out. Yeah, so you can connect directly to that network because a, a lot of customers with these new products, they have difficulty finding that because yeah. their, their router doesn't I'm, identify it. This is wild, but I'm actually thinking about because what I do, ever since, we've been in our current house ten years. So you're renovating your house now, mate. Well, we're pretty we're close to being finished. We're close to being finished. <laughs> um, we've had the same network name and password for that ten years, right? Right. So when I get in another Orbi or another brand to test, I just make the SSID the same, same and the password the same. Turn it on. You don't have to change anything, and everything works right. Yeah. This is wild, but I'm thinking, with my next Wi-Fi upgrade, I'm actually going to start from scratch. Really? New network name. Because I actually think I need to get all the IoT devices and start again with them, yeah. reconnect them, delete the accounts, start yeah. again. I, I don't I, feel like they're properly connected to Alexa or Google, well, all that kind of stuff. You reckon you got work to do? I got how many networks have I got at my place? Yeah, I, I don't know I, why. I'm to if I were to get this, I would make this the one and only network in my house. Yeah, but you're mad. I don't know why I have multiple networks. Because I, I like it. You're just I'm like testing this. a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's not because he's testing, folks. It's because when you go to his house and you open up your phone and say, what's the Wi-Fi? You've got Kylo Ren, Boba Fett. He's a Star Wars nerd. Darth Vader. Down to the T. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Whereas our guest network is called Oscar Piastri 81. Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah. Oscar Piastri 81. That's the year he was born. No, that's his number. His number. number. He yeah. was born in 2000 or something. He was, Probably, yeah. Yeah, 81. He's that's your age. Young. Hey, hey. I'm that's not, young, I'm not that's that young. younger than yeah, you. That's younger yeah. than me. Yeah. I am getting younger old. than me. I said today to someone, like in a recording, I said, oh, I'm 48 this year. Oh, man, I nearly died. 48. Getting closer to Stephen's age oh, on a percentage be basis. You can have a five in front of you. You know, we, we, there's going to be a time where we're both going to be in our 50s. And soon after, you'll be in your <laughs> 60s. <laughs> no, not too soon. Will we wow. still be doing this then? What do we agree to? I think we agreed for a year ago, was it eight years? To go to was 20. It, was it out? Was it to go hour? to 20 years. Yeah, so what's that now? We're down to seven. Yes, one down. <laughs> yes, seven to go. Wow. So you will get to 60. Yeah, and you will be, yeah, in your mid-50s. Mid-50s, mid-50s. Yeah. Mate, that's retirement time. Should man. we rename it at some point too, old bloke? Saw it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Imagine so. Imagine we had a don't spin-off. Stuff around Imagine we brain. had a spin-off, yeah. two old blokes, and then in the feed for Sunday, two young blokes. <laughs> yeah, right. Two young blokes talking tech. We'll monetize it. They won't get paid. They're yeah. young. <laughs> what are your thoughts? I don't know. I forget what we talked about. What was it? Um, uh, we were... How old you are. That's how forgetful he is. See, it's kicking did in, you get folks. The joke? Did you get it? It's kicking in. It, he didn't. It wasn't intentional, but it worked. <sighs> Two blokes talking tech. Uh, you can read about the new Nick in 970 series at techguide.com.au and eftm.com. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech with Trevor Long and Stephen Fennec. Well... We are Telstra at the moment are rolling out uh, satellite coverage via Starlink, correct? And it's called Telstra uh, Telstra Satellite Internet, powered by Starlink. Yes, but the Starlink power that Telstra is using is if you went direct to Starlink, you're getting a faster connection. Correct, and it's more expensive. Yeah. So Telstra giving you a cheaper, slower. Plan. So we talked about this when they announced it, but I I said to them when they said, "Do you want to review this?" I said, "I got." thousand megabit internet at my house what are you talking about why would i do yeah. that i said but my brother lives on the outskirts of town in young he's got like a seven thousand square meter property i don't know what that is in Texas, but it's small well. no it's not yeah. big it's just yeah. it's just yeah. 
It's just a nice little yep. kind of sounds big yard, you yep. know. Yep. And because the other review you'll see on EFTM this week is a robot lawnmower that does that distance, oh. and it's unbelievable. Anyway, so I checked that out when I was down there. But also, I said send the Starlink to him, and I'll test it at his place, right? Yep. So they got it. I got it a month or so ago. They installed it um, a month ago, and I went down there had a look. He's not there, so I just grabbed the key. Good times. <laughs> So it's the same satellite dish as you would get if you went to Starlink for satellite internet. Yeah. $600. Same price, nothing different there. If you're with Elon, it's $140 a month, $139, for pretty fast speeds, 200 to 300 megabit down. So yep. good speeds. Yep. With Telstra, it's $125 a month, but you only get capped at 50 megabits per second. 50 uh-huh. down, 10 up. Which really? is essentially what you get. It's, it's as good as or close to what you get with NBN satellite. It's as good as what you get or close to NBN fixed wireless. And my brother had NBN fixed wireless. Yeah. So the wireless version of, of their, their internet. And it was good, a uh, little flaky, uh, speeds, you know, 30 to 40, whatever. So he's now getting consistent 50 meg speeds. Now, the real difference is, and this is where you've kind of got to, fashion your mind to say this isn't for people that just want satellite internet. Yeah. This is for Telstra to meet its universal service obligations in the bush yeah. where they've got to provide phone lines to people. Yeah, right. So with this package, oh, right. you get a Telstra smart modem. Okay. The Telstra smart modem works with the Starlink and you get Wi-Fi for a start on the yep. smart modem. And the, by the way, that smart modem, not bad. Yeah. I got Wi-Fi like 40 metres from the house. It was yeah. pretty good. Not bad. Then... You get 4G backup. So if you're in a 4G yep. area with Telstra, you've got the backup, yep. which is part of the smart modem, and you get a phone line. Connect a phone line, yeah. So you've got a fixed line, uh, landline phone with unlimited calls to is that free? Is all that Australian pilot? numbers. Yes. Wow. So the 125 covers internet and landline phone, which for a lot of people costs them $50 a month and yeah. $70 a month. So it's about the price. Because Starlink don't offer you a phone. No. And the no. modem's different. That, well, it's the same box that you get, but you plug, in yeah. this case, you plug the Telstra modem into it. Right. Um, okay. And when you do speed tests and stuff, it all shows as being on the Starlink network and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Right. Um, and you know what? For my brother, he doesn't care about extra speeds. It, he just wants to be reliable and working. Yeah. And, and, mate, it's, and it's working. It is. He yeah. said to me, I've cancelled my ambient. I went, I don't wow. know how long you can keep that thing for, so uh, <laughs> let's be careful there. Yeah. Um, but, but see, it's a competitive space because the MBN are working on their fixed line, fixed wireless services. Mm. They're probably going to get upgraded and they'll get faster, which, you know, I don't want to yeah. go too deep into it, but that goes to my policy for the NBN is I think if I'm <laughs> Peter Dutton, yeah. I'm, going to the, I'm going to the next election saying, you know, through Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott and others, we created an NBN faster, more affordable than the previous, this is what they would say, yeah. and we guaranteed and we got 25 megabit speeds to all Australians. Um we now are committing within five years to have 100, 100 megabit speeds for all Australians. Yep. Now, they wasn't, won't that, be, wasn't that the roadmap anyway? They won't be able to say it like that because they're, it simply won't be possible to say all Australians. There is always going to be some yeah. some roadblocks, some yep. place where it's a problem. But you also need to say available because not everyone wants it. As yeah. we see with the fibre to the premises upgrade, yeah. not everyone's taking it because yeah. they don't need it. People are happy with what they're, they're happy got. with what they got. Yeah. Yeah. But you go to the election saying, if you want faster speeds, yeah. we're going to make sure that every home, as many homes as possible, this is the hard part. You got to you got to yeah. couch it. Can do the fibre upgrade. Mm. Um, well, and they, would, aren't they getting to that point though? They're already doing that. I don't think they. No, they, they, there's still a couple of million homes that can't right. can't yet. But the majority is the there, upgrade. aren't they? A couple of millions, a lot. There's a lot still missing, right? Cool. And then you've got to think about the people on fixed wireless, so that, that network can be upgraded. Yep. Then you've got to think about the satellite customers. And I think what they need to do is basically cop it on the chin and say, listen, our satellite service does this. If you want a faster service, maybe the NBN should retail Starlink as well, mm. just like Telstra is. Yeah. Although, yeah, because cause Skymaster's, they're, they're, that's kind of... It's a great service. My mum had it for years. But, it's awesome. But what's what's the max speed you get out of that? It's it not nothing varies. flash, is it? it used, it's about 50, but oh, right. there are some pro plans that will go higher. Okay. It's not, not amazing. It's yeah. not 200 at all. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem with SkyMesh was always um, you had very strict data limits. Is that what it's called? SkyMesh or SkyMuster? SkyMesh. Is that what it's called? I think I thought it was called SkyMuster. Look it up, Trev. SkyMesh, I think, is the name of the one of the only companies that retail it. Right. So you There's can't get you can't get you can't get NBN satellite from Aussie Broadband. No. Or Telstra. Right. Right. So SkyMesh is the retail provided. Yep. 
Sky Muster is, is the, the NBN service. satellite. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Now those satellites, by the way, have an expiry date. They're not going to. There's only two of them up there. They're not going to last forever. Yeah. So th- there will be an expiry. They need it. They need a future plan for yeah, this. Yeah, so, for sure. You know, I would think they need to cop it on the chin. And essentially, the government was always subsidising regional Australia with Sky Muster. Mm. So if they need to cop it on the chin and go, if, whether it's Amazon or Elon, whoever's service they use, because yeah. Amazon's low Earth orbit satellite yeah. internet service will be pretty spectacular too. Yeah. And their service is vastly different. You know, the Starlink satellite's this big. Yep. Uh, um, Project Kuiper, the Amazon one, they've got one the size of a CD case. Wow. Which does like fifty meg speeds. What? Then one. How many of them of, do they Kind need? of like the Starlink one, which does like two hundred meg speeds, and they've got a really big one for enterprises. So it's just a bigger receiver for the for yeah, the right. signal, right? Yeah, yeah. I think what the MBN does is partner with someone else for the future of the satellite service to yeah. the remote and regional Australia. Definitely something and that's what you're looking at. Like we spoke <coughs> earlier about Optus and their satellite plans. That seems to be the solution. Who's yeah. uh, from above. From above. Yeah. Bring it on. Well, satellite's the future. And, but I do worry about where it puts us in terms of relying on, mm. you know, the good, Amazons and good, Elons. Good, good to have it, though, if you, if some, if stuff on the ground goes to, goes to you know, it right. goes out. Yeah. I mean, I, Is yeah. it, wasn't that Telstra's it plan to have, have, a, have a, a satellite backup if they're in the event of an outage, say an Optus scale outage, that Telstra isn't their objective to have a satellite backup to sort of create nodes where they can still no, have a service? No, uh, uh, Telstra did the deal with a satellite company to provide backhaul to their towers via uh, satellite, right. but it's not really for the end user. Right. Um, but everyone's going to go satellite. Phones will be satellite. Mm. Yep. Like, mate, phones in five and, years and from Op- now but Optus are going to be saying, vastly different because but, they're, because a some will change because they'll actually be, in, be new antennas to allow for satellite better. Some will change because of the repairability in Europe. Like, it's going to be yeah. a very different in landscape. In the next few years, for sure. But didn't Optus say that they'd even like existing phones would work? With, yeah. With so their, their their satellite yeah. plan yeah. is for voice, right? Not data. Right. Voice. So make calls with existing services. Yeah. Data will come next Data once they once they see radios, the impact on the on the network and different things like that. Yeah, well, it's fascinating. Interesting. It's exciting times ahead. But look, I, I was impressed. My brother's very impressed with this with the satellite service yep. from Telstra. Um, it, it, it just works on and the I roof. Think, they mount on the roof. Yeah, I think yep. that. I think of like I when I was at Bob Fulton. God bless him. Um, when we used to go to his farm, he had no. Um, he would have had a landline there, a copper landline. Yeah. And I was thinking, let's say you own a big thousand hectare property and you go we're going to build a new house over there yeah do you think telstra's going to come run a copper line no, no. <laughs> but you got to have a home phone I've, fine i would heard you cases get, of you that, get yeah. this i've heard cases with nbn where so you know how there was the big the big trend was people building granny flats mm. and there were a lot of uh residents who the nbn on um, there was only one connection to the property and mm. they said like we're not going to give you a second connection it's bad luck like uh yeah. So that the it's a granny flat. Put some Wi-Fi in. Yeah, that puts people other are selling stuff. and leasing those granny yeah, flats. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. Anyway, fascinating. Satellite could be the solution. You can see the photos of uh, the Telstra satellite internet powered by Starlink on EFTM.com. And uh, let's know what you think. This is Two Blokes Talking Tech. Because I stuffed up at the start, I don't know how long the show's been, but I think it's been good enough. <laughs> long enough. It's just additional work yeah. for Trev. Yeah. Oh, well, it's your own fault. Wow. Yeah. There it is. Thanks it's for your own. support. <laughs> really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. We're back again uh, next week. Next week will be a remote show or uh, Riverside. That means we're really? going to take something to record with. Oh, my God. I thought about that. You're going to do video as well or just audio next week? Mm-hmm. Just audio, audio only next week, baby. So sorry, you won't be able to see these faces next week. Thankfully. Enjoy this. You can watch this episode twice if you want. If you want to. <laughs> Did that just happen? Or is the show, did you stop recording? No, I'm still did recording. Did that just happen? Yeah, yeah. You did won't you? see that next week either. Ah, uh, wow. And if you want to see what we're talking about, you've got to go to the Facebook yeah, page. Go to the private. Tech guy, private. Two Blokes Talking Tech, EFTM, Trevor Long, and, yeah. e- and on, on YouTube. It's all yeah. there. Best best podcast channel in the world. Thank you. That's it. I think so best too. One. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about best us, value. not mine. Okay, right. Yeah, good, no, good, we're talking about the whole lot, mate. It is. We had a we had someone say that to us in the in the start of their text message this week. It was a uh, long time listener, first time caller to the best podcast channel yeah, in the world. That's it, and uh, that was. Uh, I think he, I that, think he then said, uh, "And you're doing very well." I think, mate, you've you've laid on the, yeah, the on my list. We, so. You've confirmed you're a listener. If you you hit yeah. the you hit the right, you tick yeah. the boxes. Yeah. All right. See you next week, mate. See you, buddy. This is two blokes talking tech.